This is Ben from Life in 360. I'm here with my friend Austin from youtube.com slash Austin Newman. And Austin is a Premiere expert. He has an excellent YouTube channel where he teaches all the best Premiere tips and tricks. And I've asked Austin to come and show you guys a really important hack that will speed up your workflow significantly. A lot of you guys have frustration dealing with 4K 360 footage. It just takes a really long time to do. Your computer overheats, it takes a whole day to render sometimes, and it just really makes editing a pain in that you know what. So Austin has an awesome tip for us that is going to massively speed up your workflow. Absolutely. Well, Ben, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. So what I want to show today is a little bit about how to edit large files in the field. I know a lot of us, whether filmmakers, VR filmmakers, 360 photographers, we want to be able to have smaller files to work with on our laptops in the field. So today we're going to be showing you how to create proxies inside Adobe Premiere Pro in order to do this. So let's go ahead and jump in and we'll show you how you can create these proxies. All right, so we are now inside Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018, and in order to create proxies, there's a couple ways you can go about doing it. You can either go ahead and start a new project. It'll ask you for ingest settings and a few things like that, but I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the program so I can show you if you already have a program existing or if you've already got a timeline going with a 360 workflow you're working in. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to start your proxies right here inside this project. And just to clarify, what we're doing is we're taking this massive file and we're turning it into this so your computer can actually handle it then you edit the whole video with a, an image size this big then at the end you go back to this so therefore your computer will be able to handle that much smaller file size um, and then you reconnect it later and then it's so much easier absolutely so if you wanted to create proxies right here inside Adobe, we would go up here to File and we go down to Project Settings. Now once you get in Project Settings, just select Ingest Settings and this is where you're going to actually start your proxy creation. So I have this project labeled Untitled. You can name it whatever you want, but this will pull up your project profile. The next thing you want to do, you may be in general, scratch this, but you want to be inside ingest settings. Now ingest, what this is going to do is, as Ben said, it's going to create these video file proxies from your original footage. So you'll have a 4K video file. This is going to create a temporary proxy, something, for example, what we have here is 540p. So something much smaller that your computer can handle out in the field. And once you're ready to export, it's going to reattach that 4K clip and export as it usually would. So if we're going to go ahead and create that. Let's go ahead and check this box for ingest settings here. Now there's a couple things we can do. We can either copy, transcode, create proxies, or we can copy and create proxies. In this case, we're going to be creating proxies. So I'll go ahead and select that. The next thing you're going to go to is your preset. This is going to be the actual proxy preset that you're going to create. It's really up to you on which size you want to use and which one that you prefer to use because once again, these aren't the actual files that are going to export. This is simply something you're going to show your computer to speed up your workflow. So for me, I'm going to select 1024 by 540 Apple ProRes 422. This is going to be a really nice proxy that I like to use that's really going to help me speed up my computer, especially only working with 8 gigs of RAM out in the field for me. I found a lot of the Apple laptops that a lot of us might use in the field are never really more than about 16 gigabytes. Mine is 16 gigabytes here and still this can be slow as, even when I'm editing like HD footage, right, it can still take hours and hours to render HD. HD footage. So being able to do this I and mean, really, really down that file size, um, it's just going to be a, a massive add-on to those of us who are editing on laptops. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This is something that if you are using a laptop out in the field, you should absolutely know how to do. Yeah. So while we're still in this screen, what we want to do is we're going to use our proxy destination and we're going to select this. Now I've already selected one on my desktop and I created a new little folder called proxies. So I have those going there, but you can choose your own location. Alternatively, if you wanted to add these proxies to the cloud so you can work on them wherever you're at, that's another thing that you could do. So you could select creative cloud files and it'll upload them to the cloud so you can use them. But for now, we're just going to create these locally and store these on the desktop in the file path that I have selected. So now once you're done with that, you're just going to click OK. So once you're back inside your project, if you wanted to bring in another clip just as you usually would, so I will bring in a 360 clip, for example, and I have some files that Ben here has given me. So let's use the one 
one in Times Square. We'll select this one here. It's going to now import this regular file. You'll also notice that as soon as you do this, it's going to open up Media Encoder automatically once you have it installed. And you have to have Media Encoder installed in order to do this. What Media Encoder is going to do is it's going to create that proxy and export that proxy in the background. So no worries, you can continue working on your project. And once this is complete, it's going to attach it inside Premiere and you're going to be able to start using that proxy. Yeah, that is really awesome because it means you can get editing straight away while the proxies are being created. Definitely a, a massive benefit to not have to wait for transcoding to happen before you get started. And also for you guys that don't use Media Encoder, I use it a lot for all of my videos. It's a really handy tool and it means you can still use Premiere and you don't have to wait for it to render or to export. You can export 10 things at once and still use Premiere. Absolutely. So if we're going to just go ahead and pull this into our timeline, this is going to create our new sequence based on these dimensions here. And this is fabulous footage. We're going to go ahead and use this and we can edit as we like without interrupting the workflow whatsoever. Once this proxy is ready and attached, we can be able to stream through multiple clips of the same size right through the timeline. Once we're done, we'll just export as usual. There's no special technique or anything to it. So I would just do Command M if I wanted to export. That'll pull up my export window and then you export with the same settings that you would with any other video. Something crucial to remember is that with 360 footage you're not working with a normal 16 by 9 aspect ratio. You're working with 2 to 1 therefore it's very smart to export the exact same dimensions as your original footage. There are also, I noticed in Premiere 2018, there are now VR presets that give you dimensions of that equirectangular. So just remember that, export at 2 by 1, not 16 by 9. Cool guys, I hope you enjoyed this tip. Really, this has the power to speed up your workflow significantly. Remember, whenever you can speed up your workflow or remove one part of it, it means you're going to have more time shooting. And for me, I don't know about you, but my favorite part of the workflow is the actual shooting, not waiting for the damn computer to render <laughs> and export. Like it drives me nuts. Sometimes when I throw my laptop out the window. So being able to do this, I know it's going to save me so much time and frustration because personally, as a shooter, I spend more time editing than shooting. And that's something I really don't like doing. So to be able to save that much time is such a powerful tool. And that's gonna accumulate after weeks of using something like this. You're gonna save so much time and you'll be able to shoot so much more. All right guys, until next time, this has been Ben and Austin. And Austin, where can they find you? You can find my work on Instagram, at Austin Makes Films. And you can check out some of my other Premiere Pro tutorials right here on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Austin Newman. Awesome, and you can find me at youtube.com slash life and 360 photo. I'm also on Instagram, instagram.com slash Ben Claremont, and Facebook as well, facebook.com slash life and 360 photo. All right guys, get proxying, and we'll see you in the next video.